Harvey and I were able to uh, talk about uh, at the ARF conference uh, was how to use return path data. And by return path data within Kantar Media, we use that as a term to talk about any type of data that's coming back from a device, whether it's a, a digital set-top box, whether it is a mobile phone, whether it's a computer. We were, and uh, what we discussed today was how do you use that information to gain a better understanding into minority audiences. As you um, probably know, with the explosion of digital cable and the wide distribution that digital cable has ex is experiencing today, there are many more programming choices, and a number of those choices are, are focused on minority audiences. On our national service that we talked about, uh, which is by DirecTV, there are over 100 minority-based minority programming um, channels, and that's out of the 400 that DirecTV offers. Our focus today was really to look into how you can use return path data to gain a better understanding both from the viewership of minority audiences, but also as a look toward how minority audiences are rapidly growing. Um, the 2010 census uh, is only uh, uh, producing what everyone knows is happening is it's just an explosion of minority audiences. Additionally, the, the findings that we found today and the way that we work with return, with return path data is not only something that can be applied to what's going on with minority audiences, but can also be extended into long tail networks. Those networks that um, have a very niche audience, uh, networks like Fuel and Reels, networks like um, um, Ovation, we have a very loyal, uh, consistent audience but up until this point, until return path data, had, they did not have the insight that they needed to run their business. Now the value of using return path data over recruited panels, which is typically used for audience measurement, there are several advantages. One is you're using very large sample sizes in our direct view sample, that's 100,000 uh, households. Um, also, the fact is uh, we don't recruit respondents to participate, there's no response bias therefore. And um, a third reason is, is there's no fatigue, um, respondent fatigue. In other words, in uh, panels uh, where there's people meters, for instance, there's uh, respondents who have to push buttons, or if they're doing diaries, they have to fill out diaries. In our case, there's no such type of uh, bias there. We also, when we started looking at the data in, um, in direct view and also in, in charter cable, which is Los Angeles, we found out that about um, about 5% of all the viewing um, nationally um, in our direct view sample is to foreign language channels, and direct TV measures about 104 channels, and as you would expect, the largest percentage of that is to Spanish language television. And in Charter, which is in Los Angeles, you're getting a higher percentage, about uh, 10 or 11% of the total viewing, and this is during the month of March 2010, prime time. Uh, we found about 10% of all the viewing is to um, um, foreign language and um, until now really no one's really ever seen this type of information because you just can't do that with the existing uh, panels that are out there. Um, and the other analysis we did once we had the data was we, we broke the um, viewing of foreign languages into quintiles to see the heaviest viewers uh, all the way down to the lightest viewers of each foreign language. And one of the findings we found is that those viewers who are the heaviest viewers of Spanish, of Korean, uh, Vietnamese, all of the channels that are available, tend to be relatively light viewers of English language. Therefore, the value of being able to advertise um, to, um, to uh, viewers who have a preferred foreign language is certainly important because you're just not going to reach them through English language television. And that was the main findings from our study. So as return path data becomes uh, more widely used here in the United States, um, and quite honestly at Kantar Media in our audience sector, we work with return path data on a global basis. We're doing work not only here in the United States, but in a number of other countries, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and where we first started in, in the UK. We are here in the United States, we have a number of constituencies that really are gaining insight from second by second viewership. 
uh, we couple this data with our uh, ad occurrence information. So we are finding it useful for uh, media uh, sellers from the programmer side who are able to look at detailed audience flow. Uh, we've had a number of, uh, of our customers start making programming decisions based off of this data. Um, some of our, the companies that we've worked with that have been announced are companies like um, uh, Scripps Networks, uh, Discovery, um, we've had great relationships. On the media buyer side, we've been working very strategically with companies like Starcom, where they're using this data to analyze pod position. They're using it for competitive insights, uh, for new business pitches, and really finding that uh, they're get able to gain greater value for their customers, as is their responsibility. And lastly, uh, there are a number of uh, uses that the data providers, so we work very closely with uh, companies like uh, Time Warner, um, Charter Communication, DirecTV, uh, and these companies are using this uh, data in ways that to go out into the local market and to help sell their own advertising, in ways to gain greater insights into their subscribers. Um, ways that they can look at this data to figure out how can they best market to uh, their unique audience, whether it's a triple play household as well as it is maybe just a, a basic only household or basic digital. Uh, it is important to note that all of this is anonymous data. There is no personally identifiable information in any of our data, but it is data that is extremely robust and very granular. Over the next uh, short period of time, I say within the next six to nine months, what you're going to see from us at Cantor Media is taking this unbelievably um, useful data set and making it even more valuable for our, our clients. We're going to start integrating other data sources with this data so you can start having purchase le level data. You will then have attribute data that will be incorporated into this. So we'll be gain, our clients will be able to gain greater insights into those homes and have a little bit more description about the households that are actually viewing. So this uh, conference today, today's uh, panels and certainly the industry as a whole is embracing return path data, uh, finding new uses for return path data, and from a Kantar Media perspective, we're extremely happy to be involved in this business, both here in the United States and globally. In our panel, there was an issue where, where, where Nielsen was presenting results that basically they sponsored through the CRE, which was talking about non-response, and basically they said the people who originally participate really aren't that different from the people who they recontacted who, who originally didn't um, participate, but um, really that's not the ultimate way to prove um, because you, you, uh, you know, non-respond is the same, because ultimately you've got to go out and find those people who refuse to participate in any survey and you don't know how they behave, because by definition they're not participating in surveys. And I think if there's some way down the road, a way to uh, compare what a, let's say, Nielsen panel does versus a set-top box, where in our panel there is no non-response, there's nobody um, who says, no, I'm not going to participate in the study. Um, and you can actually see the behavior of those people who might have participated in the Nielsen study from those people who don't. So I think there's further research down the road if someone funds that uh, to really see the value of the trade-offs between non-response and uh, the other issues with trade-offs with using return path data versus panel data. One of the biggest issues that people have with return path data is, is, it pri is their privacy uh, and is the panelist's privacy in any way violated. Um, at Cantar Media, we take privacy extremely important. Where we have uh, within Cantar a chief privacy officer that oversees all of those um, operations, as well as all of our partners, uh, whether it's Comcast, where we did uh, probably the closest we, we, you know, we came on Comcast. We did addressable advertising with uh, Comcast to make sure that all of that was absolutely privacy compliant. At no time do we gain um, access to view, uh, subscribers' names or addresses. It is always anonymized. 
uh, and there are very, very strict protocols that we put that are in place um, uh, on our side to make sure that the privacy is always aggregated and th that the, the database is always aggregated and anonymized.